What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. As you can see right here in this big Pelican case, I have the Inspire 2 yet again. Inspire 2's camera is just literally designed for Hollywood productions. It's designed for movies. It's designed for high-end commercial stuff because you're able to shoot all the way up to 5.2K Cinema DNG. You could shoot 12 stops of dynamic range. You could shoot Cinema DNG, which is DJI's version of RAW. And most importantly, what really separates this drone from consumer drones is its ability to do dual operator. Flying with dual operators is like a whole different mindset that we're so new to and we're really excited to explore because we're gonna get some cool city shots. We're gonna go to the graveyard. We're gonna go to the coastline. I got some really awesome shots planned out. And like I said, the more I'm starting to understand this system and the more experience I'm getting flying the Inspire 2, I'm really starting to realize like how valuable and why it's so important to really start training on a system like this. Like for you guys starting out, I'd highly recommend to reach out to people in your areas with Inspire 2s, try to rent them, try to get as much time as you can on these drones because it's really gonna help you level up as a drone pilot. It's really gonna allow you to take those more expensive gigs. It's gonna allow you to just be taken more seriously. So that's why I would highly recommend flying this kind of drone because I, I'm honestly just doing it for fun, but like from a professional standpoint, it's really helpful for your career to just get experience on professional setup like this. All right guys, so the basic idea behind dual operator is there's one primary controller, obviously, and then there's one secondary controller. So the primary controller is gonna be the main controller and that's gonna fly the drone. And then that one is gonna control the gimbal. Very simple. Got my iPad here. All right guys, next, you can go ahead and turn on the drone here. Boom. Go to your top right menu settings, go to the controller icon. And here you can double check to make sure that your controllers are set up properly. Here I have this as primary remote controller and over here is secondary remote controller. And in case you don't have that linked up yet, you wanna go on the second remote controller and go over here and press search primary RC. That's how I connected it before. And if you don't see that, you could also press scan for primary controller. It's gonna look for that first controller. So it's easy for, easy for you to set up. When I first connected this the other day, I found that after I linked it, I actually had to restart the app and power cycle the drone and also the controller. So in case you're not able to link your drones, make sure to just do a quick reset and you should be able to find it. But it's really important that you go to that search for primary RC so you can connect it to that main RC actually. Next, it's really important to be able to adjust your gimbal settings. You go over here to the camera icon, press advanced settings here and here you can control the smoothness the roll speed the yaw all that good stuff so that's really important and you can also do some calibration here i'd always recommend that the inspire 2 isn't great at keeping a stable horizon so go over here and go ahead and do gimbal auto calibration and as you can see here it's going to go ahead and calibrate itself to find the correct horizon All right guys, so basically we're all good to fly. Next, you just wanna go ahead and dial in your camera codecs and all your camera settings. Since I don't necessarily own the Inspire 2 right now, I always wanna shoot at the highest quality I can because I really love flying this thing and I wanna see how much of an improvement the image is. So we're gonna be shooting in Cinema Raw DNG. Go ahead over here. And it's really important to format the SD card because even though you're recording just to the SSD, you actually need to have a available micro SD card over here so it can record its proxies. I learned the hard way. So always make sure that you're formatting that little SD card even when you're shooting on the SSD. That's very important. I'm gonna go ahead and format the SSD as well.
All right, so I know this looks like a really big and maybe overkill setup, but honestly, I feel like that's what really separates like cinematographers versus photographers and videographers, honestly, because cinematographers, I feel like really care about image quality. I mean, when you think about all those Netflix shows, those movies, like there's a reason why they're using like very expensive, very nice lenses, like Airy lenses, Zeiss lenses, Cook lenses. And that's why they're also using really expensive camera bodies because they're just trying to get the best image possible. And I feel like that's what defines a cinematographer. Like what length are you willing to go for to really get the images you want? Because there's a reason why they don't just shoot Sony FX3 with Sony G Master autofocus lenses on movies and feature films and short films because in the end, video is just like painting. Like you want to be able to really be able to have control over your image and be very kind of particular and very specific about your image. And that's why the Inspire platform is so awesome. I mean, with the X7 camera, X5S, you could use different lenses on this system here. It's actually pretty cool because you can use any MFT mount lens basically. So that's the same mount for the original Blackmagic, honestly, Blackmagic 4K. And it's really cool because I could use DJI lenses. I can use Olympus lenses. There's a bunch of different lenses you can actually use on this drone. And I really like the lens I use with this because it opens up all the way to f1.7. And although this is a micro four thread sensor, by opening up to 1.7, it's really good for low light. So you guys are gonna see that later at the next spot, but we're gonna open up as much as we can. And it's really awesome for blue hour and stuff. I mean, the image is great. So really great for low light. All right guys, so next I really want to focus on the camera because when you look at a cinematic drone like the Inspire 2, a Mavic 3 Pro, all those consumer drones, at the end of the day, it's really all about the camera. Of course, the flight characteristics and the quality of the drone are also important as well, but as filmmakers, as cinematographers, the camera is what we're really mostly concerned about and that's what I really want to focus on for this next section. So for these next few clips, I really want to prove to you guys how amazing the camera is on the Inspire 2. Not only is Inspire 2 amazing because of the dual operator feature, the camera, the X5S and the X7 is actually really, really worth it and very high quality even in today's age, 2024. Today, I'm going to be shooting on the X5S camera with the Olympus lens 15mm f1.7, which is a micro four thirds lens. And although it's a micro four thirds sensor on the X5S, you're still able to capture extremely clear, crisp, and cinematic images. For these next few montage shots, I really want you guys to see if you can tell a difference between the Inspire footage versus the Mavic 3 Pro in the Air 3 footage. Personally, I find there to be a drastic difference. The i2 shots look so much more filmic and has a much higher color fidelity and way more dynamic range. To me, it looks so much more like a cinema camera, whereas the DJI Mavic 3 Pro and the Air 3 look much more like a GoPro, a iPhone, a Insta360, and it really has that small sensor look. I can really tell because small sensors deal with low light in a certain way. It adds way more noise and it just doesn't look that high quality. Although the Inspire 2 still is a little bit noisy at night, it just has that much more high quality, almost filmic, grainy look, which I think actually looks really great. As you can see, the i2 footage is able to retain much more dynamic range. You're able to maintain the highlights in the sky and it's able to really see the pinks, the purples, the deep colors of the blue hour, whereas the consumer drones tend to kind of blow out the sky and, as I mentioned earlier, really introduce that kind of small sensor grainy, noisy look, which is what I'm trying to avoid. The more I get to fly and film with the Inspire 2, the more I, get, I begin to appreciate the higher data rate in which the X5S captures. When I was collecting all of this footage, I shot almost like a terabyte worth of footage just within a few flights. The Cinema DNG RAW takes up so much space, but honestly, if you have the proper data solution, for example, like a Thunder Bay, a rate system, or just a bunch of Samsung T7 drives, I think it's definitely worth it because when you have this much higher data rate clip, you're able to really play around with the image a lot more in post. As you can see in these clips, it has a really cool film look, look to it. And that's because I added a power grade that I found online. And when I drag that on top of the Cinema DNG raw footage, it looks absolutely amazing. 
Although I didn't shoot in D-Log on the smaller drones like the Mavic 3 Pro and the Air 3, I did some experiments and applying the film power grade to the Mavic 3 D-Log clips doesn't look nearly as good as it does on the Inspire 2. And that's why I think the Inspire 2 is awesome because you're able to really play around with the look, really able to match it with cameras easier. And I just love how it deals with the filmic look and power grade that I applied to it. It looks so much more rich has a really cool contrast and filmic look to it. I just absolutely love it. So I feel like I learned so much with this time around with Inspire 2 and I really hope to get some more flights out of it. All right guys, so as usual, we are losing light here, but thankfully the Inspire 2 does really well for low light. I mean, we got that nice Super 35 sensor, and I just noticed on this lens, it actually goes all the way down to 1.7. Actually, I didn't know that. I thought it was an f2.8 lens, so we're gonna test out to see how the low light ability is with this great lens here. I'm gonna try to stop down all the way to 1.7 and see how good it is at low light. But yeah, whenever I'm in this area, I always try to find the best launching spot I always wanna find a place where it's low key. I don't like too many people around me just so I could relax, but I found this really nice spot off the side of the freeway. Sure, there's cars going by, but this is pretty low key. There's no people here. And yeah, we're just gonna launch, get some shots of the coastline and let's do it. And yeah, right now the F1.7 is really coming and helpful because we're able to keep our ISO nice and low. We're at 800 right now. All right guys, so right now we're at the cemetery and last time we were here doing dual operator, it was super cloudy. There was no cool lighting, there's no texture, there's no contrast, but right now we got a really nice kind of sunset. Honestly, the sun's starting to set. We don't have too much light actually. So the sun is looking good. We've got some cool haze in the air. Honestly, I really like this thing because it's like flying like a helicopter. Like, it's like I'm the helicopter pilot and Yusuke is the gunner. Like, he's the one aiming, he's the one shooting. It's actually really fun. Like, you can't really even compare this setup to a Mavic. Like, it's just, it's just not the same, honestly. Like, obviously you can get similar shots with a Mavic, you know, but just the different mindset and just the process of flying this thing is just so much more fun, you know? Like, I can really just relax, focus on flying the aircraft, just 
maintain my visual line of sight and Yusuke is just all locked in on the screen and it's really good because it matches both of our skill sets like I really enjoy flying I really like piloting okay I'm gonna go opposite direction now and Yusuke really likes controlling the gimbal and he doesn't have the best eyesight actually so it works out perfectly all right so in conclusion the question I keep asking myself is why do I keep making these inspired videos? I mean, number one, obviously, it looks like you guys really enjoyed these videos. I mean, some of my most top viewed videos so far on my channel are inspire content. So I really want to try to understand this drone and its camera as much as I can. And with each new video I make, I feel like I'm really starting to understand its quirks and really starting to understand the power and its potential. Like when I first started flying the Inspire 2, I thought it was overkill. I didn't think it was worth it for all the extra weight, the extra batteries, the extra attention you get when flying it. But honestly, I can confidently say that I felt like I was completely wrong. Like I really love the Inspire 2. I love the X5S camera. I love the X7 camera because I feel like the footage really speaks for itself. I mean, when I see this footage after I graded it, after I put on a film power grade, I mean, I just can't stop looking at the footage. I mean, even these shots of this graveyard, which is relatively mundane, I mean, it just looks amazing. And that's why I think the Inspire platform is so great because you're able to just get really awesome shots. I don't know how I can keep saying that without so sounding on a, like a broken record, but honestly, I think these shots speak for itself. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys like this kind of content, it really helps me out. Please hit that like button, hit subscribe. And we got some more videos coming soon. So thank you guys so much. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.